In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an infinite background. This is something you might use if you are making a side scroller, and I use this myself for my Flappy Bird clone. This background is just one image, which you can see here. So before I get into the code, I'll quickly explain how this works. What you see in here is the game window with the background image blitted onto it. Now, it's not actually taking up the entire width of the screen, so that means that I need to make sure to bring in a second one next to it. So this way, it always looks like the entire screen is filled with the background, even though it's actually two images side by side. And then all we do is slowly move the images over to the left, which gives the impression of the screen scrolling to the right. Now eventually those two images are going to go off the screen, so we need to make sure to always bring in images on the back of that queue to have this uninterrupted background scroll. Eventually we'll get to a point where the first image has gone off the screen entirely. So to avoid having endless amounts of images blitted onto the back of this queue, we just take the first one that's gone off and we move it to the back. And this resets the process again. So every time an image goes off the side, it just gets put to the back of the queue. So in this case, with just three instances of the same image, we can just create an endless scroll for as long as we need to. So with that concept explained, let's have a look at the code. Here I'm going to be using Sublime Text Editor. And apart from my Pygame file, the only thing that I need is this background.png file. So make sure that this one is in the same folder as your script. Now we start this in the same way as always. So I'll say import Pygame. And then I initialize Pygame by saying Pygame.init. I'll then create the two variables for my screen. So this will be screen width, which I will set to 1500 pixels. And my screen height, which I will set to 600 pixels. So with those defined, I can now create the game window. So I'll add a little comment to say create game window. And for this, I will say screen equals, and the function for creating this window is this pygame.display.set underscore mode. In here, I just need to feed in those two variables that I just defined, screen width and screen height. And for now, I'm not going to load any images. I just want to make sure that the bare system works. So I'll just set up my game loop here, and I'll say run equals true. And while run do whatever is in this loop. Now to make sure that I have a way of actually getting out of this loop, I need to add in an event handler. So add a comment to say event handler, and I'll say for event in pygame.event.get. Uh, the only event that I'm looking for at the moment is event.type equals pygame.quit. So basically when you've clicked the, the cross in the top right corner of the window, and when that happens, I just want to set that run variable to false. So that's going to mean that this condition is no longer met and that kicks me out of this while loop. So as soon as that's done, right at the end, I want to say pygame.quit. Okay, so let's run this and just check. There we go. So the pygame window is coming up and it does just say pygame window here. And if I click this, it closes down. Okay, so first of all, let's just rename that so it doesn't say pygame window. Uh, say pygame dot display dot set underscore caption and I'll call this endless scroll. So now if I run this you'll see at the top is saying endless scroll. Okay next I will set the framework so uh, the frame rate so I'll do this right at the top uh, just underneath pygame dot init I'll say clock is equal to pygame dot time dot clock and I'll define the frame rate as a variable so I'll set my frame rate to 60 frames per second. Then the first line within my uh, my while loop was going to be clock dot tick at the frame rate of FPS. So if you notice that your game is running very very fast for some reason, if especially if it's a smaller game or a demo like this, it may be because you haven't set a frame rate. So your computer is just running it as quickly as it can. So this just is going to keep it a little bit more stable and consistent. Now with that done, I can start loading in the image and setting up the background. So underneath my game window, I'm going to add a section to say load image, and it's going to be bg is equal to pygame.image.load and the name of the file bg.png. So this only works for me because this file is in the same folder as this script here. If it was in a different folder or a subfolder, you need to make sure that you put the full file name and the location within here. And then just at the end, we add .convert. So now let's try blitting that background image onto the screen and just see if it works first of all. 
So I'll say draw scrolling scrolling background. And it'll be screen, which is the name of the game window that I created earlier up here. Screen dot blit. And what is it I want to blit? It's the name of that image, so BG. And then I need to give it the location. So the X and Y coordinates are going to be 0, 0, because I want this to be blitted in the top left corner. Now if I run this, I'm not going to get anything on the screen. And that is because I'm not telling Pygame to actually update the game window. So right at the end here, after my event handler, but still indented within the while loop, I'm going to say pygame.display.update. And that's going to take all the commands from the while loop and then show them on the screen. So if we run this again, you can now see that game, or sorry, that background image is taken up its space within the game window. But just as I showed in the presentation, you're missing, or we've got an empty space here. So I actually need more than one image to make sure that this is fully filled up. Now I can simply look at this and just kind of say that it looks like a second image is all I'm going to need here. But in reality, this may differ depending on how big your background image is or how big your game window is. So what we need to do is calculate how many of those tiles I actually need, or how many of those background tiles. To do that, I'm going to define an additional variable up here. So just above the game loop, I'll add a little section to say define game variables. And the only one I need for now is tiles. So I basically need to work out how many tiles I need to be able to fill the entire width of the screen. So to do that, I can just take that screen width and divide it by the width of my background image. Now I need to extract that background image width first of all. So up here I will say bg underscore width is equal to bg dot get width. So let's put that in here, bg underscore width. And first, before I complete this, I'm just going to print this number out. So we'll say print tiles and just see if this is working the way I'm expecting it to. So if we run this, you're now seeing that it says 1.73 tiles. Now, of course, that can't really be the case. It's either one or two. I can't print that many. I can't print a 0.7 of a tile. So I need to round this up. Now to round this number up, I'm going to import the math module. So I'll say up here, import math. And I'm going to change this number to math.seal for sealing and run this again. Now you see it's rounding up to two. So it knows that I need two tiles here. So let's get rid of that. And to make sure that I'm drawing all of these tiles, I can go into this section here where I'm currently just blitting one of them and add a for loop to it. So I'll say for i in range zero to tiles. So that's the number of tiles that I have. We just blit that onto the screen. However, the x coordinate now can't be zero for each one of them. So the first one is going to be zero, but then the second one is going to be offset by the width of the image. So what I will do here is say i multiplied by bg underscore width. So when i is zero on the first iteration, well, zero times anything will be zero, so that's fine. And then when i becomes one at the next iteration, it'll be one times background width. So if I run this again, you can see I've now got the two images side by side. Now that those images are in place, let's add scrolling. So up where I've got my game variables, I will define another one. This is going to be scroll, and I will set this to zero to begin with. Then within the game loop, underneath where I've got my section for drawing the scrolling background, I'll just add a comment to say scroll background. And here all I'm going to be doing is changing the variable scroll. So this is going to be decreasing because remember, this is going to be moving the images to the left. So the X coordinate is actually going to be turning into a negative number. So now that I've got this variable here, I need to make sure that it's included within the X coordinate of these images. So we just add them on here, plus scroll. If I run this again, you can now see it's scrolling across to the left. However, once those two images go, it all becomes a bit of a blurry mess. And that's because I don't have any more images to fill in the gap after them. So remember from earlier, I said that when one image goes off the screen entirely, we need to reset the scroll and make sure that the same images are now restarting the loop. So underneath where I'm checking or where I'm reducing my scroll variable, I will add another little check here and there'll be a comment to say reset scroll. Oops. And all I want to do is just check if this scroll variable is greater than the width of the image. Because if we've now gone past that 
that width in how far we've scrolled, well, that means that the image is completely off the screen. However, the scroll variable is a negative value. So I need to make sure that I take the absolute value from it. So this will drop the negative and it will just give me the positive value of it. So if that's the case, let's just reset the scroll and everything goes back to start. And if I run this again, it's going to scroll for a little bit, then it does this and then you can see it jumps back in. So you get this blurry mess and then it jumps the image back in. Now the reason you get this bit of a blurry mess is because at first there's two images that fit, but as they slide, before the first image goes off the screen, the second image has already passed this side. So there is actually a space that appears on the right hand side and that's what you're seeing here. There's no image to fill it. So when I calculated my tiles, I actually need to make sure that I add an extra one as a buffer. Now if I run this again, you'll be able to see that it's essentially just continuing. So now we basically do have an endless scrolling background. Every time this scrolls, one image goes off the side of the screen and the whole thing just resets. Now when this happens, it's actually hard to see that this is a bunch of individual images and that's the effect that you want. So that shows that it is working correctly. But just to demonstrate what's really going on in the background there again, I will wrap each of those images in a rectangle. So this isn't something you would be doing if you were actually implementing this in a game, but it just helps visualize what's happening there. So I will create a rectangle from this image, first of all. So BG underscore rect is going to be the new rectangle. And then within this section here where I'm drawing each of the background tiles, I'm also going to draw the rectangle. So I'll say pygame.draw.rect. I will draw it onto the screen. I will give it a color of red, so 25500. The rectangle name itself is, uh, I've just defined it earlier. And then I'll give it a border so that it doesn't come up as a solid rectangle. Now this is just going to draw it at position 00. zero. So as this scroll variable here updates. I need to make sure that the rectangle's x coordinates are also updated. So I'll say pg rectangle x is set to basically the same number as above. So i times pg width plus scroll. So it's just the same x value as what's up here. Now if I run this again, you will see that this red outline follows each of the images and it just makes it a little bit clearer to see what's happening. So each of these is an individual tile but as soon as that one's gone off the screen, everything kind of resets. You don't see it happening, so it just gives you this continuous streaming background. And that's all there is to it. So I hope you found that useful, and thank you for watching.